So one of the main assumptions with ANOVA that we need to check is our normality. And we're going to talk about basically three main ways that we can test our normality assumption. Okay, so the three ways that, that we've really got are uh, one is we can just look at the histograms. So what this allows us to do is it allows us uh, to basically form a histogram for every single group that we have and we can see do they roughly form a normal distribution or some sort of bell curve. So let's say that we've got three different groups, so we're going to have three different little histograms and we might see something that looks like this on the first guy, we might have something that looks like this on the second guy and we might have something that looks like this on the third guy. Now each of those looks slightly different but on each of them they basically form a rough bell shape. And remember the requirement isn't that they perfectly follow this normal distribution, it's that they, they are roughly following a normal distribution. So that's one way that, that we can try to determine and assess if we have a normal distribution for all of our groups is to look at the histograms. Another way that we can do this is we can do what is called, we can look at the what are called QQ plots. Actually, I think those Q's are lowercase. We'll put them as lowercase. Uh, and these stand for quantile, quantile plots. OK, and we can actually do all of this in just a single plot. So what it looks at is it takes the data that, that we have, and it puts it into ascending order. So the smallest measurement that we have at the beginning, biggest one that we have at the end. And when we look at that, it basically is, it does, it does a test about how far away from the mean are we actually, based, that's our like, um, our actual measurements, and then, or our experimental measurements. And then we can also look at like theoretically, like theoretically if we're following this, you know, normal distribution, half of our measurements are going to be lower than the mean, half of them are going to be above the mean, and we can figure out the quantiles uh, for each of those. And what you get is you'll get something that looks like this. And so this will be the experiment, or this will be the theoretical on the bottom. And this will be the experimental. And what we're looking for is we're looking for this guy to basically follow some sort of straight line. Now there can be a little bit of deviation from the line, um, but if there's a big deviation from the line, we've got a problem, or if we see like some sort of big pattern. This one actually looks okay, but if we were to instead have seen something that has like a super heavy tail or something, like it starts to deviate a lot, and maybe we kind of go up like this and then back down, that doesn't really follow a linear line. And we might be, we might want to take a deeper look to see what's actually going on with some of these specific data points and see if it's from a specific group that really doesn't follow a normal distribution. Okay, so we've got histograms by group, and we can look at the QQ plots, and the software will actually produce these very quickly for us. The last one that, that we can do is we can look at what's called the Shapiro-Wilkes test. Shapiro. And this is a really interesting little test. So what it does is it basically sets up 
the null hypothesis that says that the distribution is normal and the alternative hypothesis that the distribution is not normal. And we can do this by groups and it will kick us out as some individual p-values. So if we had three groups, we'll say group one, group two, group three, it'll kick you out of p-value. Let's say this p-value equals 0.5 p-value equals 0.9, and then the p-value equals point, uh, we'll do 2. And we can do this test at like the same alpha level, we can do 0.05. And basically, if we find insignificant results here, we would say that, hey, we can't reject the null hypothesis that these distributions are normal. So we just continue along that, um, along this same assumption. Now, if one of these gets down to being a significant result, let's say this is 0 0.01, then we would reject the null hypothesis and that, hey, one of these distributions is not normal. And we could look at that you know, third group and we'd say, hey, we probably can't include that in our ANOVA uh, because it's not following that normal distribution. Anyhow, so we've got these three ways kind of a more like numerical mathematical way. These are some more like subjective but visual ways that, that we can take take a look at it. And uh, sometimes, you know, we're able to, to say, hey, it's close enough. We're going to just assume that it really is normal. And sometimes it's too far away and we'll say, hey, we need to take a, a closer look at, uh, at our assumptions and a closer look at our actual data to see if ANOVA is actually a, um, an adequate testing method for the scenario that we're in.